So I want to speak on divine inspiration as a vehicle with which God launches into new things to exceed expectation. Divine inspiration. Now, I'll take my text from the book of Job chapter 32, verse 8. Job 32, 8. It says, But there's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Praise the Lord. Now, God has a divine plan and purpose for everyone. As we can see in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, I know the thoughts. Oh, I, have, I know the plans that I have towards you. The thoughts of peace are not of evil to give us an expected end. And these plans are very many. It includes making the barren to be fruitful. Amen. It, including making the sick to be healed and to be healthy. It includes making the poor to be rich. It includes promotion. It includes safety and security. It includes solution to all challenges of life. That is the plan of God for you and I. Now, secondly is that I, I, I got this quote from somewhere. I can't remember who quoted it. But it says this. I mean, who, 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 the, the originator of the quote, I can't remember the name. But it says, man cannot do without God. But God will not do anything without man. Note that. Man cannot exist outside God. But God will not do anything without man. So in other words, God needs your cooperation for everything he wants to do. For the actualization of his plan on your life, in your life. For the actualization of the purpose, his promises, it needs your cooperation. And that's why in the book of Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 30, Ezekiel 23, verse 30, when God wanted to do something in the land of Israel, he said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me. Before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. You can say that God is a place without man. Praise the Lord. And the reason is why. Because when God created heaven and earth, He put us in charge and delegated the authority and the dominion of this planet earth to man. So if He must do anything, He needs your cooperation, He needs my cooperation. Praise the Lord. I'm just laying a foundation before I go on. Also, you need to understand that there are divine principles and processes that God has established and has been revealed and communicated to us via his word. It is the understanding of these processes and principles that guaranteed a divine outcome. Praise the Lord. When God say something, he automatically cedes his sovereignty to what he has said. That's why he said, I honor my word above my name. In the book of Psalm 103, verse 7. No, Psalm 103, verse 7. The Bible says, God made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The ways of God are the wisdom of God. They are God's divine ordained principles and processes that when followed, guaranteed a promised outcome. Am I communicating? And this principle works irrespective of who you are, be it a clergy or a lady, be it a pastor or a member. It works. For example, in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 38, is a principle. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. So it's a principle. It works. Either you are a believer, either, either, either you are a, a pastor or a member. It works. So now that brings me to the topic now. What is now divine inspiration? 
divine inspiration is the steering of the Holy Spirit. Spirit to spirit communication. In the heart of a man that creates a dissatisfaction. So if God wants to move you into a new realm, it starts by stirring up and make you to be dissatisfied with the status quo. Praise the Lord. It is a desire. And that was mentioned in the first service. For a change, you just have that desire for something. All of a sudden, you just have a desire to build a house. It could be the Spirit of God communicating to you. Praise the Lord. It could just be a desire for something or for a change. It could be the Holy Spirit moving you or prompting you to do certain things which you may not understand fully at that moment. But when the outcome manifests, you can look back and say, oh, it was the Spirit of God moving me. And I want to share some testimonies. When I was in the, I gave my life in the Orthodox Church, and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. So anytime I go to church, I, had, I, I made an observation. The youths are not interested in the things of God. Those that are interested, those, those, those that are, they call themselves youths, they're in their 50s or 60s. Amen. These people are not even born again. When, when, when they want to do drama, it's like watching entertainment. And I just have this urge in me. God, we are the youths. Then one day I went to church and I saw a brother. By his mere appearance, something told me this one is born again and filled with the spirit. So I approached him and I shared my burden with him. And we agreed and said, okay, let's start to pray. So we agreed every Friday, we will fast and we will meet together, my two of us, and pray for two hours that God revived the youth. Then something happened. One day the, the priest called us for a meeting, youth, and everybody came, both the... And he made a proclamation and said, today I'm dissolving the youth executive. Amen. And thereafter, he appointed new executive. And I was the pioneer, and the pioneer secretary of the new executive. Many people said this youth will not last. May I tell you that till today, the youth fellowship is still waxing strong. Praise the Lord. God helped us. We organized programs. People start to have interest in the things of God. Looking back, it was a divine inspiration. Praise the Lord. I didn't understand what we were doing. We just gather ourselves together, two of us. Let's pray for the youths. And we're just praying, just praying. Every Friday, two hours, we will fast and pray together. And all of a sudden, the priest we never spoke with came, disbanded the youth council, appointed new one. Until today, in 2009, when I got transferred to Lagos, some of the youth, current, the, the present youth executive there, contacted me and said, they saw in the Chronicles that I was the pioneer secretary and they would like to visit me. The youth fellowship is still standing strong. I pray for someone today. That divine inspiration that will make God to do a new thing, that will exceed your expectations beyond your generation, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. So, it is the Holy Spirit moving you to do certain things. It is God opening your eyes of understanding to see the solution to a problem or a challenge. Also, it could be God opened your eyes of understanding to the missing link to your miracle. Many of us will pray. I remember a testimony of a sister. She was believing God for the fruit of the womb. womb and they have been praying together with, with, with her husband. The one that God spoke to her, the Holy Spirit spoke to her, there was a secret she has been hiding from her husband for many years. And God told her, discuss this with your husband. She was afraid because she knows that if, the, if, her, if her husband hears of it, she he will not be happy. She obeyed. Yes, there was a minor trouble in the home, but the Lord intervened. Less than six months, 
After that, she conceived and she brings forth fruit. So, divine inspiration is God opening your eyes of understanding to the missing link in your life. The missing link to your miracle. And I pray for someone today. Whatsoever has been missing, whatsoever thing that you need to do, that cooperation, that step you need to take that will deliver that miracle, that new thing to your hand, the Lord Almighty will open your eyes of understanding in Jesus' name. Also, divine inspiration could mean divine ideas and special skills. The Bible talks about Bezale and Oalib in the book of Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 10. Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 10. God filled these two people with the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and skills. God can give you an idea. I still remember this when I was in the university. I was a librarian in my fellowship. And then we, people used to bring books for us to sell. So the, fellowship, the, the, the library unit, we are always lacking fun. Then God gave me that inspiration to start selling books within the campus. So I will go and get Bibles and Christian books, go to fellowships. And within a year, I was handed over about 1,000 plus then. But by the time I was handing over to somebody else, we had executed close to 40,000 worth of projects. And I see handed over about 5,000 by divine inspiration. So God can give you an idea that will bring forth new things in your life. Say amen. amen. Now what are the means by which you can receive divine inspiration? Now let me say this before I go ahead. You see, you are in this point. God wants to move you to that point. It starts by inspiration. It starts by inspiration. It starts to put the desire, to teach you what you need to do. I also remember this of a, of, of a pastor that shared with us. He was going through a lot of financial difficulties. And he went to God, what should I do? And God spoke to him. Two things you will do. Every January, give me your first fruit. Every October, give me your fruit, your, 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 your salary. And that was all. By the time God wanted to bless him with a house, I mean, this is a testimony that he shared with me one-on-one. -on -one. The man that God used, he said, God spoke to the man and said, my servants also, go to him and tell him wherever in Lagos he wants a house, build it for him. If you disobey, I will bring you down. The man was pursuing this pastor. Sir, please, where are you? Come. That divine secret, that divine revelation that God will use to launch you to a new level, that will launch you into his desired destiny, God will give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how can we receive this? I mean, what are the ways by which we can receive inspiration? Number one, note, the Holy Spirit is one who inspires us. But he used several means. Number one, looking around. By looking around, the Holy Ghost can inspire you. I also remember this testimony in my former station. A brother came out and gave a, te gave a testimony of how he invited somebody to church and the person gave his life to Christ. And I was challenged. So I noticed that the lady she inv he invited also has siblings. So on that day, he simply came to, uh, she came to church with her siblings. And we, had, we were supposed to have a program, a seven, weeks, a seven days program the next day. So I told them, please, I'm inviting you for tomorrow's program. Because then they were still not fully grounded. And it was only the elder sister, elder sister that was born again. The other ones are yet to be born again. By the testimony of somebody. So those, the, the, the complaint, and say, oh, they don't have transport fare. I said, just make sure you come tomorrow. When you come, come to me. I will give you your transport fare, no matter the cost. And they came. And the first day they came, that lady gave her life to Christ. Praise the Lord. Today, for some months, I have to be giving her transport fare. But after some time, she, I don't need to do that again. She became a worker. So by looking around, look around you, God can inspire you. Praise the Lord. By looking backward, there are things that have happened in your life 
that if you look at it, it has been consistent. It could be a pointer to what God wants to do. Also, by looking forward, look into the future, you can be inspired by looking inside, inward. Also, by looking into the word of God and by looking upward. When you, make, when you do all these things, you position yourself to be able to receive inspiration. There's an example in the Bible of somebody who was inspired unto greatness, and that was Elijah. You see, there's a saying that aspiration plus perspiration equals to success. But you cannot aspire until you are inspired. And, when, and the intensity of your perspiration will speak about the clarity of your aspiration. Look at Elisha. We all knew about his aspiration. But we didn't know. Most of the time, we don't, we have not, many of us have not known that his, aspira his perspiration for the double portion of the anointing was because there was an inspiration. Inspiration is that vehicle that the Holy Spirit used to push us into his desired purpose. And I pray for someone today. The Lord will inspire you in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the, that inspiration, it will bring forth new things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we pray, atmosphere for inspiration. Number one, you have to be born again. So if you, you have not given your life to Christ, I want to beg of you, come out and, be, and give your life to Christ. Number two, provide the information Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance what we know, what we have stored. Now, for example, this message I'm preaching today, I've heard it from our dad in the Lord, Pastor Iadeboe. You no, know, there was a time he preached the message on the power of inspiration. And I've listened to the message one or two times. When it was time, the Holy Spirit brought back that same information and synthesized with other things to deliver this message. You've got to provide that information that the Holy Spirit will use to inspire you. So in other words, you have to be a, a, a student, someone who studies. Study the Bible. Read books, both secular, that are, that are, that are, that are useful and spiritual. If, I, if we ask many of us sitting there, have you ever read, I mean, read a Christian novel this year? You may be surprised that none, um, that, sorry, that many have not. Read books. Provide the information. Apostle Paul said, spoke in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. He's talking to, to Timothy. He says, bring back for me my cloak and the parchment, especially the books. No wonder Apostle Paul was a man of deep revelation. As a matter of principle, I don't even read books again. I study books. I can take a book and read it for the, for the next two weeks. I, I give myself, every chapter I make sure I memorize a scripture. I make sure I internalize it. You have to give yourself to study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Inspiration will not just drop from heaven. You have to provide the resources, the materials that the Holy Spirit will use to inspire you. Praise the Lord. Also, there's a need for you to practice the act of meditation and quietness. The Bible says study to show yourself quiet. Study to be quiet. You have to practice that act of meditation. In fact, Miles Muron said, when you pray, you are talking to God. When you meditate, you are listening. So don't just pray. Spend time to meditate in the word of God. And lastly, you have to pray in the Holy Ghost. You have to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you do all these things, the Lord Almighty will give you inspiration unto greater heights in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we be on our feet as we pray? As I read the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, it says, And your year shall hear a word behind it saying, this is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. 
There's a prayer I pray so much. And that prayer is, Lord, open my ears and open my eyes. Cause me to ye- see the invisible and cause me to hear the inaudible. So I want to say, Father, open my eyes of understanding. Open my ears, O oh Lord. Cause me to hear the invisible. Cause me to hear the inaudible and cause me to see the invisible. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, open my eyes of understanding. Cause me to see the invisible. Cause me to hear the inaudible in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes of understanding. And let me, O oh Lord, see the invisible. And cause me to hear the inaudible in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. If you, if you hear God speaks to you, I'm telling you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. One of the reasons why many of us, we are not able to hear God. We cannot be inspired by God is because we are too noisy. Too much noise. But in the name of the Lord, I speak unto you. The Lord will grant you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is troubling you, the peace of God will override in the name of Jesus. You say, Father, grant unto me the sensitivity and quietness of the spirit to be able to receive accurately from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, Lord. Father, grant unto me the sensitivity and the quietness of the spirit to be able to receive, O Lord, from you. In the name of Jesus. Accurate. To be able to receive accurately from you. Father, grant unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I did mention all the fact that inspiration is about God giving you the missing link. To your miracle. You say, Father, that missing link to my miracle, to my new level, Lord, reveal to me by your spirit. And as you reveal, I receive the grace to do. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That missing link, that link that is missing to your miracle, pray that God Almighty will reveal unto you in the name of Jesus. That God will help you to connect all the dots, all the dots. All the doors that need to be connected so that that new thing, that miracle can be delivered unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And this one came to me this morning. And thank God for the testimony and some of the things pastor shared during the workers' meeting. By divine inspiration, God can give you an edge over the devil. And I remember one that happened to me. There was an incident that would have taken my life. It was on a Saturday, I went to Sunday school preview and I came back. And immediately I got to my wife and said, we must pray now. Ah, and we prayed. Tuesday, after then, the devil struck. But the Lord has gone ahead. You say, Father, by your divine inspiration, give me a, an edge over the devil in the name of Jesus. Give me an edge over the enemy. Give me an edge over the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give me an edge over the devil. Give me an edge over the devil. In the name of Jesus. By your divine inspiration. By your divine inspiration. Give me an edge over the devil. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Inspiration. Is the solution. To complacency. Simple. Say father. Every, every joke of complacency. Every joke of stagnancy. By your divine inspiration, I break in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every yoke of stagnancy. Everything that makes you to be comfortable when you are not supposed to be comfortable. Everything that has made you to accept the status quo. Say, Father, by your inspiration, I break those yoke in the name of Jesus. I break those yoke in the name of Jesus. I break those yoke in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You say, Father, divine ideas that will launch me into limelight. Lord, release unto me in the name of Jesus Christ. That divine idea that will launch me into light. The divine idea that will launch me into limelight. That will usher me into my new, te- my new level. Lord, release unto me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now, the last one, we'll pray it in threefold. In fact, the initial topic was exceeding expectation. But last night, God turned you to this. But the link is this. Divine inspiration unto exceeding expectation. 
And let me explain this. To exceed expectation is to meet up what is expected and go beyond. And we'll start with the church. Yesterday when we were at, um, pastor took us to the land and some things were said. And oh, we all shouted, hey, amen. You see, Jesus' embassy is going places. You don't believe it? Jesus' embassy is going places. You say, Father. Father. That divine inspiration that will take us to where you want us to be as a church. Lord, release upon the pastor, upon the ministers, upon the workers, upon every member. That divine inspiration unto exceeding expectation. Lord, release upon us as a church. We are going places. We are going places in the name of Jesus. As a church, that divine inspiration unto divine unto exceeding expectation. Release in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want us to pray for our children. Where you never dreamt you will get to, that will be the starting point for your children. You are not saying amen. We say, Father, we commit our children to you. At whatever age they are, inspire them unto greatness. In the name of Jesus. Inspire them unto exceeding expectation. Inspire them unto exceeding expectation. In the name of Jesus. Inspire all our children to exceed expectation. They will be the best in their classes. They will be the best in whatever they do. In the name of Jesus. Unto excellence in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, lastly, you will now pray for yourself. Say, Father, inspire me to exceed all expectations in all aspects of my life. In the name of Jesus. Pray that God, the Bible says there's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Lord, we pray for divine inspiration. We will set new records in the name of Jesus. In whatsoever we do, we will be exceptional by the spirit of counsel, by the spirit of wisdom, by the operation of the spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. We will exceed. We will break records. We will set new records in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. We appreciate your name for your word that has gone forth. Lord, we pray, Father, that this word will produce the desired result even in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, for everyone here this morning, we shall exceed expectation in Jesus' name. Now, when on the island of Patmos, when Paul was beaten by a snake, there was an expectation. And that expectation was that he would fall down and die. But he exceeded that expectation. He exceeded that expectation. Somebody here this morning, you will exceed the expectation of your enemy. You see, there is a way things go that by expectation, this, should, that, that, this, this is likely to be the outcome. But the Lord will interject and turn things around. And the Lord, by his inspiration, will exceed your expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray.